the Org to tell us about what 350 Org are doing, their wonderful role in this. Um, and Hannah, give it up for Hannah, everybody. Not too close. Um, got it. Uh, I'm Hannah Thomas. I'm the digital director at 350.org, a global grassroots movement fighting against the fossil fuel industry and for climate justice. I'm so excited to join you today and thank you to Claire and Shane for um, the things that you said. So, today we rise for climate. On the 8th of September, people all over the world are taking part in over 900 actions across seven continents, in towns and cities, universities and places of worship to drive climate action within our communities, sending a clear message to our governments that the science is clear. We have the momentum. The technology for the energy transition is ready and we demand bold action now. And the amazing news is that 50,000 people all over the world have already turned out so far. In the last few hours, women have spearheaded anti-coal marches in countries across Asia. 25,000 people, 10,000 of them children, turned out to a youth climate march in Uganda, while more turned out outside the UN climate talks in Bangkok. Activists from Australia to Canada, from the Pacific Islands to Indonesia, have been gathering together in creative actions, much like we are here. In Japan, people are protesting those banks that continue to support and finance fossil fuels. And in Argentina, communities are gathering to oppose fracking. Tens of thousands more are still to turn out today in marches and rallies in Copenhagen, San Francisco, Paris, Lisbon, and more. Yeah. And I'm so thankful that you're all here and that all of this is happening today because we are at a tipping point. What we've seen in 20 years of governments leading climate negotiations, even with scientists pressing the urgency, hasn't been nearly enough. With climate impacts escalating, we don't have the luxury to wait to see what bureaucratic negotiations have to offer. I mean, we've heard some of this, but already we have experienced catastrophic heat waves in North Africa, Europe, Japan, Pakistan, Australia and Argentina, deadly wildfires in Greece, Sweden, the US and Russia, drought in Kenya and Somalia, major water shortages in Afghanistan and South Africa, extreme storms and flooding in Hawaii, India, Oman and Yemen, record melting of the Bering Sea ice, and sadly, the 400th month in the row of above average global temperatures. There is no time to lose. But today, together, we are building a groundswell of support for climate leadership and creating the momentum to secure a fast and just transition to a sustainable and equitable world. In order to achieve this, communities worldwide are leading to secure a fast and just transition to 100% renewable energy for all while also stopping and banning all new fossil fuel projects from being built. So, there are a series of upcoming political moments and opportunities for our political leaders to embrace the reality of the climate crisis and step up their actions to tackle it. Next week, the Global Climate Action Summit is happening that convenes leaders from all around the world and it's an opportunity for decision makers at all levels to provide deeper commitments and accelerate their actions. In October, the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, will release a special report on the consequences of global warming surpassing 1.5 degrees. And that's a chance to galvanise governments in their efforts to prevent the worst impacts of climate change. At the same time, the Climate Vulnerable Forum Summit is being held by those governments who are in line to suffer the worst consequences of unchecked global warming. And that's an opportunity to learn from the leadership of those on the front lines. 
But this mobilisation today is not just about what's decided in the corridors of power at summits and formal negotiations, but it's about what you can do, what we can do, and the commitments that can be made in our towns, our cities, universities, local institutions, places of worship or community. It's up to us to make this more than a political flashpoint. Mobilising globally sends a powerful and necessary message that communities are rising up everywhere to stop fossil fuels and demand true climate action. So real, local climate action means building decentralised, renewable energy infrastructure that serves everyone's needs and doesn't just replace a big plant with another one, excluding workers, citizens, farmers or wildlife. Real local climate action means that workers in the fossil fuel industry are given a chance to be a part of the energy revolution. Small-scale renewable energy projects need more trained workers to build, install and maintain infrastructure than the fossil fuel industry will ever need. Real local climate action means not swapping one fossil fuel for another. It means no fossil fuels, period. Real local climate action means that jobs, innovation and opportunities are possible with a low carbon transition. There are no jobs on a dead planet. There is no innovation in propping up the fossil fuel illusion. There are no opportunities if people have to leave their homes and lives behind when the next hurricane or drought hits them. People from all walks of life in every corner of the planet will continue to do our part pushing local leaders around the world to commit to this fossil-free world and an equitable future. We are not afraid to organise. We are not afraid to protest. We are not afraid to take direct action when necessary. The only thing we fear is complacency and a false sense of security in vague promises and distant commitments. The science is clear. The technology for the energy transition is ready and we need bold action now. We must rise to this moment, rise to the level that this crisis demands and rise for climate action.